Nigeria's government, Nigeria's government. I wish I knew the agenda here, but I really don't. You have now joined South Africa as the two main African countries that have actually approved commercialization of GMO crops. Ladies and gentlemen, they hate it when I say it, even when they know that what I say is true. You hate that because I'm a non-Nigerian and I'm saying it and I'm a Ghanaian and so people hate it. But you have to hear me on this because it's urgent. The government of Nigeria has embarked on a move that will in the long run create a challenge for the people of the country. If you have followed me on Nigeria's stories for a while, ladies and gentlemen, you will know the number of times I've spoken of Islamic jihadist groups that have taken over certain places in Nigeria. That is a fact. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a common food shortage in Nigeria as a result of that. This is not because the Nigerian farmers are lazy, no. And it's not because global warming is affecting rain patterns in Nigeria alone, no. But this is because farmers across Nigeria are threatened by Fulani herdsmen and Islamic insurgents. Farmers are losing their farms to Fulani herders for no compensation and also to jihadist groups on a daily basis. It has become a dangerous time for farmers in Nigeria to go to their farms without real protection, if you know what I mean. In addition to that is the kidnapping of farmers in exchange for ransoms, something that is becoming common. This is the chaos brewing there. There are places where farmers will have to pay militia groups for protection before they can have access to their own farms. Ladies and gentlemen, let no Nigerian social media person misinform you. What I'm telling you is a common thing in different states across the northern and the middle part of great Nigeria. When I say it, I'm hating. But when an international media house says it, they are being objective. But I tell you this, this is not going to change the reality over there. But there is another issue of equal importance that needs the attention of the Nigerian people. This is to the Nigerian people especially. Nigeria's National Biosafety Management Agency, NBMA, has, as of May 2025, authorized over 20 GMO products. Nigeria, please listen to what I'm saying to you and take precautions accordingly. Your government, instead of taking on the bandits and jihadist groups terrorizing farmers, has rather chosen to solve a common food crisis with GMO seeds. The Nigerian National Biosafety Management Agency has since this month, July 2025, authorized the usage of 25 GMOs in Nigeria. These GMOs include those that are on the field trials and those that are approved already for commercial release. In fact, according to the Nigerian Tribune online publication dated as far back as last year, 11 of those seeds which are meant for field trials only are already in circulation and 10 of such seeds for commercial release are out already. South Africa was the only African country that used GMO seed commercially until now. South Africa officially approved the use of these genetically modified organisms in 1997, but now Nigeria has joined in. What I'm going to say to you next isn't directly connected to the GMO seeds, but the coincidence of it is what intrigues me. Check this out. From 1994 to 2000, South Africa's population was growing over 1 million per year. 1 million people per year. In 1994, when South Africa gained their independence, their population was 40 million approximately. From 1994 to 2000, it grew to 47 million in six years, which is a little over a million births every year. They introduced GMO foods, however, in the year 2000 in South Africa. From the year 2000 to 2025, which is 25 years, South Africa's population increased by 23 million, which means South Africa in 25 years, year on year, had a population growth about 900,000, which is less than the over 1 million in the 90s. I'm not insinuating anything. Just go do your own research. 
And the truth of the matter is this, ladies and gentlemen. The population of South Africa today has the highest inclusion of other African nationals than in the 90s. Which means, if you considered indigenous South Africans only, they will not even cross 800,000 new births in a year. I do know that the crime rate in South Africa has increased over time. And all of that is happening. But the population is actually slowing down if you compare it to the 90s. Does it have to do with the foods that they eat now? Maybe. If you didn't know, I want to bring this to your attention. There is a deliberate plan to reduce the world's population. For some reasons, certain high-profile people and organizations believe the world will be better off with a small population. And so, there are attempts to use all kinds of means to slow the growth and reduce it eventually, ladies and gentlemen. However, it appears this plan is more targeted at people or countries that fall on the lower end of the economic ladder, which majority happens to be black African people. Therefore, there are all kinds of vaccines and GMOs that are suspected to work in achieving that purpose. Ladies and gentlemen, this is speculation at this point. Almost every developed country in the world is skeptical of GMOs or have completely banned them. As a matter of fact, ladies and gentlemen, even though weather patterns aren't as favorable as before, especially in Europe, modern farmers in developed countries haven't jumped on GMOs yet. Instead, they have adopted alternative means of cultivating organic crops, ladies and gentlemen. Because this is how the world's food security or supply has been sustainable till this day. But for some strange reasons, Nigeria's government has joined South Africa's government to welcome these types of seeds, ladies and gentlemen. And I want you to think about this. If GMO seeds were so safe and good for consumption and for current climate patterns, why has the European Union utterly objected to them? Why hasn't European farmers who actually face the worst climatic conditions jumped on it? The EU countries largely reject GMO foods due to a combination of precautionary regulation, due to public skepticism, environmental concerns, and the political pressure it comes with. Many find it suspicious and dangerous to both the human body and the lands on which they are going to be planted. Therefore, Austria, Germany, Greece, Italy, Poland have utterly banned the cultivation of GMOs. Algeria, Zambia, Tanzania, Zimbabwe, and Angola has also totally banned them. Japan has banned its cultivation and strictly demands that GMO foods are labeled appropriately in the supermarket. Most developed worlds make sure that the labeling is done clearly for people to choose on what they are putting into their bodies, ladies and gentlemen. But this is Africa where the market setups are totally different from the conventional market in the Western countries, ladies and gentlemen. Here in Africa, we lump it all together on the shelves for sale. So even if people want to make sure they are choosing the right type of food, ladies and gentlemen, it becomes hard to know. Our restaurants and food joints are completely different, ladies and gentlemen. They don't indicate whether it's from an organic source or not. They cook it, sell it by the roadside, and people buy them. This is it. This is how it is done in Africa. And because of this fact, it's totally impossible for the regular people on the streets to determine what they are buying. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, when you have a country that makes the decision to authorize this number of GMOs without the consent of the people, it becomes problematic. And that's what is happening in South Africa and in Nigeria. Now, these are some of the authorized GMOs that are in discussion in Nigeria. They have the BT cowpea, the TELA maize, and the BT cotton. All these are already approved in South Africa also. At this point, it's optional for local farmers to cultivate as usual. But before you know it, the government has bought out the majority of the organic seeds and began releasing these GMO seeds into the market. And when there isn't options on the market for farmers, that's when they are compelled to adopt them, ladies and gentlemen. The potential side effect of GMOs, according to experts, include allergic reactions, 
environmental side effects, including suspicion of causing damages to essential living organisms in the soil. Unknown long-term health implications on, on consumers, ladies and gentlemen, and mental and ethical control and even corporate control. Now, the corporate control aspect is even more a major issue of discussion right now in the sense that GMOs don't have the ability to reproduce their own seeds over time. That is a fact in many instances. Therefore, once the seeds are planted, new seeds will be needed for a new season, which means you have to depend on government or suppliers for supply, which also means government or suppliers will determine who to sell to or supply to and who not to supply to and therefore there will be control this is a whole conversation being had around the world there are civil society groups in nigeria pushing against this such as gmo free nigeria alliance homef and era who have demanded a nationwide moratorium or ban on gmos but their voices aren't being heard at this point they cite threats of food sovereignty, farmer autonomy, and alleged health and environmental risk, ladies and gentlemen. But the government isn't listening. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, we have to protect what we have at all costs by ourselves. The European farmers have stood up against this. Many countries that are developed in the world are not allowing it in their farms, in their countries. We, the black people, should also do the same don't sell your organic seeds after harvest don't sell them all keep them don't give out away your food security for money ladies and gentlemen our health matter and our food sovereignty is up to us to control don't leave it in the hands of government because they don't even eat what we eat take care of yourself before it's too late ladies and gentlemen and i'll end here for now and hope someone is listening God have mercy on us all in Africa. Be sure to subscribe and click on the notification bell for more of my videos. I'm Cyrus and I'm out. It's bye-bye for now.